Okay, dear students, welcome to the lecture of today. So today we're going to talk about what the title says, Advanced Database Searching Methods. So why do you want to use more advanced things than BLAST, as we talked about yesterday? Basically, there are two reasons. And uh, one reason is that we don't find all the hits we want with BLAST. So basically, we want to have something that's more sensitive. I want to find protein sequences mainly, but also DNA, but mainly proteins that are more distantly related. So like the example given here, it's like there are alpha beta globins. We know they're related, the structures are similar. If you look at it, they look similar. But using BLAST P search, you don't find them. Uh, but luckily, there are methods such as Delta BLAST or Hammer. And even later matters, called I will talk about very, very briefly, uh, that can find this quite easily. Secondly, we want to take maybe a very long sequence or compare it against something else, or we want to do uh, or along two chromosomes against other, so you have things that are, uh, are very similar. And in these cases, it's too slow to use. Uh, uh, BLAST N, in this case, was DNA sequences, or too, or too memory exp expensive. Uh, and in these cases, the actual hits are very similar, so very easy, because if you take two chromosomes of two humans, they're 99.9% .9 identical, but you still want to do find the few cases where they differ. So that's why the alignment is important. And another related question is basically when you do short read sequences, so that you do, do take sequences from a uh, RNA sec or from uh, another thing, so you have very short reads that are 100 or even 50 nucleotides long, and you want to search them against the whole genome, which is 3 million, billion days plus. But you have millions of these reads. You have, you have, so you really want to do something that is super fast, but also in most cases, it's a perfect match. It can be single or a few muta mutations differences, but basically, you're looking for things that are 99% identical and not like finding the most homologs. You don't care about that. So that's why BLAST is not always sufficient. So we will talk about these things. We will start with, uh, with overview of these methods. So BWA or BAUTI2 are things that are significantly faster. There are methods like HS Blitz, uh, Cyblast, Hammer that are much, much more sensitive. And there are even methods that actually can do both things that are MM6 is probably stated out at the moment, or MM6-2. They can be as sensitive as the most sensitive methods but also significantly faster than BLAST. So here is, uh, the goal of this study today is to understand a bit of how CyBlast works, hidden mark models, and also be about and other modern model methods. And this is just an overview of things that are messed and told to that. We will not go through, we will not go through all of them. We will just look at some of them that I think are most important. So Cyblast. Cyblast was, I would say, a revolution when it arrived. It's probably not stated out anymore, but it's still very, very used. It's still very functional. And you can run it on the website. You can run it on the NCBI website. You will have to do that in the lab later today. Uh, so the, it's very simple in its idea. And the reason why it actually works quite well, why other early methods didn't work well, is because BLAST has very good e-value statistics. So it's very good as, at not including false positives. But the idea is basically you do normal loss P, you take your protein sequence, you sort of this protein database, and you get a number of hits. And then uh, you create multi six alignments. You don't really do full multi six alignments, which I'll talk about tomorrow, but you actually just create basically to find the matching positions for every initial sequence in your uh, in your sequence, in your initial sequence search. And you create, basically, you count how many times I find a sort of amino acid in each position, and you create what is called a position-specific score matrix. So basically, you take this position is always two to five, and it's hundred to four. But this position can be any amino acid randomly, and then we basically have zero advanced knowledge about what should be in that position. Uh, and then you take this PSSM, which we'll talk about later, and do another database search again. So you iterate it. And 
And then you keep on doing this a number of times. I mean, typically maybe five or three or ten or something. Uh, and um, in principle, you can keep it running until you don't add plan and more sequences. It has a tendency that nowadays, if you find more and more, that sometimes you can just explode and get too many hits. So often you limit yourself to a certain number of times. So in, and at the end, you use the same e-value statistical method things like that as you do, did with BLASP. So it's as sensitive as that, and that's all good at filtering away uh, uh, different types of uh, errors and so on. Uh, and you can stop it at any time. And things that then there is a small risk that's called contamination. So if you start getting wrong hits, including your data in the search, they might expand and take over, so you end up with something that's very, very far away from where you start with. <coughs> so there's always a small risk that you can do that. So if he's the same, it's basically a position specific. So you have a position here, position one, two, three, four, five, 20, and you have a, a, a score matrix, like any normal score matrix. You basically have a log odds score, I like to find an alanine in position one, and an alanine in position two, two, et cetera. And you see that they are all, I mean, they, they can be so that some positions that you have, uh, 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 here you have you want to have a Q or a D. You want to analyze them as equal, but all others are bad. Well, other positions basically you absolutely want to have a lice in here in position two. In position three, you see that nothing's really good. I mean, you have three scores or three here in some places. Right. And so, so you have like different scores and different things. And uh, so on. So you have um, you can have some some scores that are well, so basically you have a specific score for each position in sequence. So that mean doesn't mean that every Alanine should be to say you should get the same score in an alanine in an original sequence that has a lot of tryptophan line that you get a good score, but even in the case we have no tryptophan line to that position, you get a bad score. So how do you calculate these frequencies? You can basically just take the frequencies. Uh, first, you actually add some what you call server counts. You basically calculate how often uh, uh, you find something in the background frequencies. Uh, so that's I mean that they're basically that's the same way as to calculate uh, the substitution matrix. Uh, so you are calculating this set of count frequency TI for each column separately uh, as follows. So you take uh, uh, observed frequencies divided by the background frequencies and uh, so then and you are multiplied by the target frequency in the substitution matrix. And next you take these frequencies or the target frequencies. Well, the, the target frequencies QI is defined as um, uh, as a weight between the observed and the self count frequencies. Uh, once it's measured, the target frequencies is not supposed to assign a score for given aligned columns, so basically there's logarithm of substituting residue I uh, in position P I. It's basically like the QI divided by PI. Um, and uh, then you can, uh, yeah, some other tweaks, you can align more things up. But basically what it shows you is that you get a good score for something that's conserved and a bad score for something that is not conserved at all. And if, if it's a random position, you basically get zero scores for everything. So it's, 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 a, it's like a substitution matrix. So what you do here is that uh, if you, what you should result this, as we really shown in the lab, is you start with the beta group instance. If you first run uh, BLAS P, you find only beta groups. But once you, Iterate, you find more and more, and you find the alpha globins, and maybe the myoglobins, and the nematoglobins, and the leg hemoglobins, and even the phycocyanins. You can find that are very far, 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 very distantly related to cyblast. Uh, so you find many more hits. And as a typical example, is like if you do a search here, globin, and you look at the e values you get out, the first iteration you find. Uh, Nine hits, and uh, with e values less than uh, 0 0.005 0 0 and 54 hits higher. And then you, in the second index, you increase to 182, and then you get 206 and 207. So you see it's almost more or less converged here after four iterations. While and the number of hits that are lower scores are basically the same all the time. That's basically this using the background of the databases, but 55, which is maybe what you expect. Uh, of course, some of them might be correct also, but not all. It doesn't. It does still are more distant related. You don't include them. Uh, 
So you basically, in just a few iterations, you can get more than 10 times as many hits as you had before and more distance hits. And this is a typical side of search. So this is why it's much more sensitive than normal uh, blast. And the output looks like that. So it also actually the alignments improve sometimes. So here you see you get slightly different alignments. And you see the he he values here get much, much better every for each uh, run. Well, this is the first hit here. You see the, the alignments are basically the same, but you see this expanded and become bigger. So you have an old alignment of uh, uh, so it actually covers regions that were not so conserved in the first run, but that are included later. So also the alignments are getting better. And then it's not only the sequence things. And that's also why actually you can see that the well, the scores the bit scores include from 43 to 130 more or less. And the second here has almost a good score. It's that one. Uh, RPS blast is basically a similar idea, but there you have you search a database of known PSMs, you basically create PSMs. We will talk about the, about the PFAM family later. This is a set of proto families that then some have made pieces, made multiple sequence alignments for, and then pieces, you can make PSMs for them, and then you use RPS plus to search them. What is more relevant than RPS plus here is maybe is Delta Blast, which is basically starts starting. Uh, that's basically the hit you see here on top, it's like, like the domain blast or RPS plus. Start with that, you make a PSM, and then you do the, use this for searching, uh, putting database to find all hits in the, in the, in the database. So we are finding the domain. So that's basically uh, often you find best. I mean, if you have a good set of pieces to so start from, you and you have a hit to this, you often, you often have a better hit than you have for side blast directly. And it's more sensitive than, than, than blast P, and it's actually very fast because you start by starting with a set of PSM, which is a much smaller database than you actually have in a sort of whole put in database. So it, it is a useful tool. I mean, there are other tools that can do the same thing, but this is one tool that can do this. Okay, next thing is talking about hidden market models. So hidden market models is a mathematical model used for predict for generating sequences, I would say, sequences of events. So basically in a hidden market model, you have some kind of nodes and some kind of uh, arrows or edges between nodes. And each of these are collecting probabilities. So each node you are, you have a hidden model, you, have, you can generate a letter right? or a state, but in this case, it will be a letter. So here you can generate a letter A, or C, or T, or G. And then once you're in one node, it was a market process. You don't care where you've been before. So you don't care where you go next. So they have a certain probability to go to another node. You can go to another node, you can stay the same. Again, you can do a trans transversion or you can do a transition. So, and then if, if you have this, all this probability, you can then calculate, okay, what is the probability to generate a C? Because you just take K probability of generating A and then T, G, T, C, C. And you can even calculate, I have, if I have this sequence, I can basically use something similar to dynamic programming, say what is the most likely path to generate the sequence, or what is the probability to generate the sequences, and so on. So that, that I can basically use this for seeing how well a sort of sequence match my model. And if I have this, uh, if I have a perfect set of a lot of model things alignment or alignments, I could calculate all the probability just from counting. How often do I observe a, a followed by T or A followed by A and so on, and I can calculate all these probabilities. Just see how many you have. However, if it's a more complicated graph in a different way to generate things, you need to use what's called the Viterbi algorithm, which is basically also dynamic programming to find the optimal weights. Uh, so in the multi alignment you have here, okay, the probability of finding it here would be 100% chance to get the H in position one, 20% chance to get the isoleucin, and it's 40 to get the alinoglycin in position two, 20% chance to get N of these five amino acids in position three, 60% has a lysine in position four, 80% chance of availing position five. So you have basic probability. So what is the probability to find the first sequence would then be uh, one times uh, 0.4 times 0.2 times uh, 0.2 times 0.8. So you multiply that together. And then you can say, okay, so then you take a new sequence and see what's the probability for generate that. And you can see if that sequence uh, matches. And you can do it in log odd score also. So you will have log logarithm of hard TV, which you haven't seen before is 0 0.0128, but log odds is minus 4357. Then if you normalize it to the other sequence, you can see how likely that is. 
Uh, so, so that's basically a lot. However, this does not include if you will, uh, does not include uh, gaps. So this is just a sequence like that. So if, if you want to include gaps, you need to have a more complicated model like this one here, which is called a proof of HMMs, where you have match statements. And in each match statement, you have a certain probability to generate a certain amino acid. You can add all 20, but it's they have different probabilities. And if you go for match, you can do, go to a delete stage, which you skip the next one. Or you can go to insert statement, which means that you add, generate another extra element. So in this way, you can generate sequences of different lengths, and there are different ways to do that. And these, these, of course, these parameters here are not easy to find. That's why you need to use this um, uh, dynamic programming-based methods for optimizing the weights. So you train the hidden model to do that as efficiently as possible. But you can here you have so you can observe you observe the sequence here and you can then calculate okay what is the probability to see this and how is the probability to have a gap and so on so you can basically optimize it. So it somehow it becomes like a PSSM with the difference that you actually have different deletion and gap penalties for each position. Because you can have you see how often do you observe a deletion or gap there when you train it because you can train it one by one. So you can basically say, how, how well is it to train this? So this is methods that were developed maybe some 20 years ago. And the one of the, yeah, you can also use it for alignments. You can use alignment, we basically do the same thing. You have to match or insertion or deletion or, or, or insertion or deletion into different sequences. And this is basically used for aligning two hidden model models to each other. Uh, so you have here probably just to do that. Uh, so the, the one of the packages you can do this, this pack called Hammer by Sean Eddy and co-workers. So here, this is a set of programs that are that are, are used for building the proof of MA. So you, you start with multiple, multiple sequence alignment, you can build it, you can align it to it, you can search it, you can scan it, you can uh, prepare it in different ways. One of the main tools that is very useful is Jackhammer, which is a bit like Cyblast. So you basically iterate, you start the sequence, you start the database, and you make an HMM, you iterate that several times. And it's significantly uh, more sensitive than Cyblast. You find many more hits. All the idea is the same, but because it's just that the statistics is better, the methods is better, and you don't use the search, you find more hits. <laughs> and uh, well, it's slightly slower also, so it, but it has some tricks to make it quite fast. So it's not that badly slow, but you can. Uh, it's, it's like slow in side loss, but it, but it's still it's, you find many more hits. So this is one of the general tools that are used today. If you want, if you want to find distant homologs, but it basically works exactly like the side loss, but using the marking model instead. And then you have other programs here that you can convert to different formats and so on, so because the other programs also can do the same thing. And the output is very similar to what you get from uh, last you run. Uh, so this is a hammer search. And you search, uh, you get this, you start with a file here that you made for Globins. And you search the sequence database here and you find all the hits you have here. And you find, in this case, you find all the top hits. And then you have four, some, some problems and not hits. And you have this E values, the scores, and some kind of bias. And it's just the uh, amino acids biases. Okay, so now this, so the, there are methods, I will, I will mention a few methods at the end that are probably even better, faster nowadays, particularly as the sequence databases have become very big, so these methods are a bit too slow to run them against particular metagenomics databases. But now on to the other problem, which is not having more sensitive searches, but actually have faster searches. So one of quick, quick thing is BLAT, which is basically a modification of BLAST, but it's basically is aimed for finding Similar sequences, very, very similar for nucleotides. So basically, instead of requiring one hit, you want to have several hits in the same frame to do an extension. You have a higher cutoff for the hits in, uh, in compared to loss, and it also has special tricks for inter and exon boundaries. But it's basically the same idea, it's just optimizing for other things. That's we'll not talk about more. I will talk a, more, a bit more about short read aligners instead. So short read aligners, as I said before, is the idea they have many, the millions of short reads that are maybe 50 to 100 base per long, or maybe a few hundred maybe, and you want to map them to a reference genome. So this is what you do when you do sequence in the days, that because you, the, the methods that are doing sequences, you know, a lot of, lot, 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 lot of sequences, but they're all uh, quite short. So you don't get whole, I mean, except for some long read methods, but the short read methods, the fastest ones, reads things in short base, but they're random with the student. On the other hand, you know 
in most cases, what is going to match. You know it's going to match your reference genome. But it's not, there are a couple, couple of things to take, take into account here. One is that it's uh, not all of these will match uniquely because there are repeated regions in regions. So you might have an identical 100 base patch in several places in the region. So that's one thing you have to take into account. Another key thing is that it's the might mutations. And then sometimes that is what you want to find. You want to identify the mutations. So then, so you can't demand that things are 100% base passes. There's also noise in the readings, there can be errors also, but you don't want to, to throw away everything that's 100% because it could be interesting mutations there. And then it's crucial with speeds because you have millions of things. So you have to run this in milliseconds or so you can't like wait. I mean, normal law search, I guess, human genome maybe takes a minute or a few minutes, but you can't do that if you have millions of searches. So the most common way here is basically Burroughs Wheeler. There's a link here for another YouTube explanation that is a bit better, more detailed than I do here, and it also goes through this if you want, if you're interested. So the idea is basically did you transform your reference genome into something that is very compressible using something called, called Burroughs Wheeler's transforming indexing, which is basically that you actually generate a matrix of your genome and then you rotate it in all possible combinations. So you go from abrac to abrac to the abrac, and you rotate them, so you see here. And then you sort them alphabetically. You also have an end statement here that they don't show here, but you should have an end statement also. And you sort them, and this is super easy. And then you just keep actually the last column here. And you can actually reproduce the whole, by doing that and keeping an index of it, you can actually reproducing the whole matrix again. And then you can, this is something you can compress, so you, have, so you use much, much less space. And then you can do a decompression, because you can say, ah, oh, I'm going to have, you know, very quick compression of this one. And uh, you can then actually search this database, because it's already sorted, it's very, very fast to search it. Because you know, if you want to have an A, if you only have to look here at the beginning. And you also look at the first, lots of first columns of this one. <laughs> so the searching is basically linear in time, and not even not not even log linear, but it's, it's a linear in time. Uh, and so you can do it very fast searching a bit, and you can then, if you keep the index, then you can go back and find your hits again, all the hits of the, all the certain hits that, that are perfect matches. So so that's uh, now the methods are used. This is called BWA or Bowtie two. Bowtie two is I think the later one. So they are. And, and this can search millions of hits, short reads against human genomes in seconds. Okay, at the end, I will just tell you a bit about two methods that are stated of approach to searching today. Another one is one of them is called HS Blitz, where basically you, you sort of combine the use of hidden market models with blasts, very fast searching. And, and there's a lot of tricks in pure computation as you use. Because it's a vector representation of proteins, for instance. So you, you search here, and you can see here, if, like, if you look at performance uh, of uh, uh, how many uh, how many pairs you find, and you can look at if you look at uh, 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 Cyblast, Hammer, and HSB. So basically, how many positive, false positive, weighted positive pairs? You have hundred positive, false positive. You have, 1% for the scalar rate, 10% for the scalar rate. You see that I mean, Cyblast and Hammer 3 are quite similar, uh, but uh, you, you find HS Blitz many more, you find the true positives, if any negative value you have here. And you can also iterate it the same way. So this is one iteration, two iterations, one iteration, two iterations, three iterations up here, I think. So you find an actually many more of these all the time up. I guess the red one is this, three iterations up there. So you really much more sensitive than Hammer, uh, than Hammer 3 or HS Blitz. Jack Hammer is probably pretty similar in performance, but it was not there in the comparison. And uh, yeah, uh, and it's actually faster than Blast. I didn't show that in that spot. <laughs> but still, HS Blitz is still, and Jack Hammer is still too slow if you want to search a big meta genome database because they are. 10 or 100 times bigger than the normal proteins databases, so then you need to use something even faster. And one such figure is MMSEC that uses, uh, that also basically finds consecutive K match, queer method, method, match, match, match. It's the same idea as BLAST. You have pre computed index tables that are 
in the integral of similar Q made matrices of different lengths. <laughs> and then it basically does the split waterman only in the regions that are not in the whole matrix, but only in the regions that have potential matches. And by doing that, uh, in also in a computationally efficient way, you can speed up searches. So this is probably 10 times faster than side loss and at least equal is sensitive. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for listening. And uh, yeah, good luck with the lab. <laughs>